Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. And I'm always fascinated by the sparring partners of fighters who are headed into big fights. Sometimes, when I hear about a sparring partner, I'm able to then realize that that sparring partner does fight a similar style to the upcoming opponent. And I'm able to then kind of look at that sparring partner's fights to kind of figure out exactly how that style works and uh, why it's effective. Well, Manny Pacquiao, in preparing for Timothy Bradley, has a sparring partner, Rushlin Provotnikov, right? Now, Provotnikov famously fought Mauricio Herrera, the same Herrera who just lost to Mike Alvarado. He famously fought Mauricio Herrera on ESPN on Friday Night Fights. I thought the scoring was bad in the fight. I thought Provotnikov won the fight, but the judges disagreed and gave it to Herrera, right? I've profiled Provotnikov before. If you Google him here on YouTube, um, you'll see my earlier comments on Provotnikov. Now, there is no way, in my opinion, that Provotnikov, again, there are YouTube videos on him, can mirror or mimic Timothy Bradley. Don't believe me. Believe Mauricio Herrera. He's given an interview that you really want to read. It's on BoxingScene.com, an excellent site. And in it, he talks about how he has sparred with Timothy Bradley. And how, in his opinion, having, having been in the ring with Timothy Bradley and with Ruslan Provotnikov, Provodnikov is not going to provide the kind of preparation that one would need for Timothy Bradley. You know, I know Bradley's reputation is that of a guy who comes in and headbutts you. There's so much more to Bradley's game than that, right? Look at how Bradley outmaneuvers from the outside Lamont Peterson. Now, since that Bradley Peterson fight, we've seen Peterson corner and batter up against the ropes Amir Khan's ribcage. How come he wasn't able to do that against Timothy Bradley? Right? Bradley doesn't fight that fight from the inside, he fights it from the outside. He's out and in, out and in. The one constant I'd say with Timothy Bradley is Timothy Bradley can move. He can move around the ring. He does have an inside game. He did get inside on Devin Alexander. There were headbutts. He has had fights where he's gotten underneath his opponent, stayed on his opponent's chest. I thought against Kendall Holt, he came inside and outworked Kendall Holt. But understand, that's only part of his game. He has an entirely different part that allows him to move around the ring, right? Ruslan Provotnikov, when you see him, you're seeing a fighter who doesn't match Bradley's slickness, doesn't match Bradley's movement. In fact, quite frankly, his style of inside fighting, they both can fight inside, but Ruslan Provotnikov gets hit a lot more than Timothy Bradley. Just look at the cuts Provotnikov has suffered. Look at how red his face is after fights, right? If Manny Pacquiao thinks that Ruslan Provotnikov is going to show him the blueprint on how to handle Timothy Bradley inside, I think he's mistaken. And one of the secrets to Bradley is that he moves so well that he can be up on you in an instant, then he can be away from you. He's not predictable like Brandon Rios. He's not coming at you in a straight line, right? Richlin Provotnikov simply doesn't have that level of movement. I'm sure Manny Pacquiao is going to spar with many other people, 
But really, if you're going to mimic Timothy Bradley, you're really going to have to get some guy who is just a lot slicker, who can move around the ring a lot more than Ruslan than Ruslan Provodnikov, and who's not as predictable as Ruslan Provodnikov. Let's switch gears. There's a picture on YouTube of Saul Alvarez, who's slated to fight Shane Mosley. And of course, his sparring partner is Steve Forbes. Now keep in mind, these guys have different sparring partners. But I don't know about you, but when I think of Steve Forbes, I'm thinking of a slick fighter with, you know, head movement who moves uh, just enough to make it hard to hit him. I'm thinking about a guy who can fight outside of his weight class and he doesn't really get hit in the head. Think about the Steve Forbes that fought Oscar De La Hoya. I know Karim Mayfield caught up with Steve Forbes, but realistically, you know, wasn't Steve Forbes still hanging around late in that fight? And isn't Steve Forbes really more of a slick defensive fighter than a heavy puncher who's just trying to take you out? Now, all I can say is I know Shane Mosley has the nickname of Sugar. But in my opinion, Shane Mosley is really a slugger masquerading as a fighter. Not a cute, slick fighter who's trying to defensively outmaneuver you. Right now, I would understand fooling around with Steve Forbes as a sparring partner if I were about to fight Floyd Mayweather. But style-wise, I would say, look, you, <laughs> you know, Steve Forbes is a far cry from Shane Mosley. You know, Shane Mosley's really trying to take you out with a concussive left hook or a devastating straight right hand, right? For all the talk of Shane Mosley being over the hill, people need to remember that not only did he destroy Antonio Margarito Say what you want about Margarito, but since that fight, Margarito has gone the distance with Manny Pacquiao, and Margarito, quite frankly, had his fight stopped, in my opinion, under questionable circumstances against Miguel Cotto. It wasn't like Margarito was losing consciousness, right? Margarito looked much better in both of those fights than he did against Shane Mosley, right? And let's remember, Floyd Mayweather again, in my opinion, has never been hit as hard as he was hit by Shane Mosley. And these are some of Shane's more recent fights, right? Mosley's not in there to get a decision against you. Mosley's really in there to treat you like he treated Fernando Vargas, right? Mosley's in there to get the KO. This is a guy who stopped Ricardo Mayorga. And so to have Steve Forbes as a sparring partner, um, a guy who's going to be much harder to hit than Shane Mosley, in my opinion, right? Mosley doesn't have a lot of head movement. He really doesn't, right? You know, Mosley was able to survive against Pacquiao by backing up, fighting on his back foot. You know, if Canelo feels that Mosley is going to fight that way against him, then Canelo has nothing to worry about. But if Canelo expects Shane Mosley to be Shane Mosley, and we know who Shane Mosley is. He's the guy who hit Floyd Mayweather with a straight right hand. In fact, he hit Floyd multiple times in that round. One of the best moves Floyd did in his career was when Floyd literally grabbed Mosley's right arm. Look at the video. He grabs Mosley's right arm. He was holding on. Right? Is Steve Forbes going to prepare you for that kind of punching power? I thought Steve Forbes was a relatively light hitter who didn't get KOs. Is he really going to prepare you for that kind of punching power? What about the left hook that took out Fernando Vargas? What about, the? I believe it's the same punch that took out Ricardo Mayorga. Is Steve Forbes going to prepare you for that? So I'm a bit curious about the use of Steve Forbes to prepare for Shane Mosley, that strikes me as interesting.
I'll say that. So I'm not a trainer. I'm not the one running camp. I'm not a manager. But uh, picking Richland Provodnikov to mirror Timothy Bradley and picking Steve Forbes to mirror Sugar Shane Mosley, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. As for my predictions in the fight, I know Pacquiao is at least a 4-1 to favorite against Steve Forbes. I question that greatly. Um, I think Steve Forbes is a very live underdog in that one. Very live underdog. And as for Shane Mosley against uh, Canelo, you know, quite frankly, Shane Mosley, even today, has faster hands than Canelo. Uh, I am expecting a stoppage in that fight. I'm just not sure who gets the stoppage. I think Shane Mosley is also a live underdog given the odds. Okay, I don't know if Shane wins the fight, but I'll tell you what. He has the hand speed advantage on Canelo and even older fighters, at least early in fights, the first three or four rounds, right? They have a chance to do significant damage. Saul Alvarez has looked vulnerable early. Take a look at his fight against Miguel Cotto's brother, right? Don't believe me. Believe the film, right? You'll see that Saul Alvarez actually was in a shootout in that one. In fact, dare I say, even the Kermit Cintron fight, you're going to see that while Cintron certainly lost the fight and while Cintron was spent at the end of the fight, take a look at Canelo during the post-fight interview. Um, take a look at moments in that fight where it looked like it was a shootout. Canelo looked open, right? And by open, I mean, you know, a guy can look good dishing out the punishment. But if he looks open for things like left hooks and straight right hands, and keep in mind, that's Shane Mosley's neighborhood, then that's something you need to be concerned about, right? Shane Mosley has one punch knockout power. Understand, 154 pounds is not a foreign country for him, right? Take a look at the way at which he fought Fernando Vargas. Take a look at the weight at which he fought Ricardo Mayorga, right? Neither of those guys had a glass jaw. Both of those guys ended up on the canvas, right? Shane Mosley, at a minimum, even with these ridiculous betting lines out there, has a puncher's chance against Saul Alvarez. Now, that said, I will concede that I would take Shane Mosley of seven years ago against Shane Mosley today. He is an older fighter. Canelo has one of the biggest punches in the sport. Shane Mosley is not the only guy in the ring with one punch knockout power. But in a fight between two big hitters, two guys with one punch knockout power, neither of whom is that great defensively, how could the betting line be as lopsided as it is? Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.